all right guys so we are starting the revision session so this will be a complimentary session for all in youtube so we have also started a covid based series so that there are many patients in india which are left untreated because of covid so if you can learn something about covid so you can at least treat those patients so, so we have started a covid series that is also complimentary in youtube and now we are doing what we are starting a revision module we focusing on your fmg exam so let's get started with the microbiology discussion first so let me give you a basic idea about general microbiology that is we have a scientist his name is louis pasteur louis pasteur so understand the scientist louis pasteur this louis pasteur have given different terms so the mcq that they ask in exam is louis pasteur is considered the father so he is considered the father of microbiology then understand this he gave the concept of pasteurization of milk we have a pasteur institute pasteur institute in paris named after louis pasteur so if i say the word ff stand for he gave fermentation principle he gave the concept of autoclave and he gave germ theory he gave germ theory what else what else you should be knowing about louis pasteur is louis pasteur also disapproved louis pasteur what he did what actually he did he disapproved theory of is a good theory of a biogenesis he also disapproved theory of a biogenesis and next next important thing is you should be remembering that is he gave three vaccine these vaccines are remembered by a car vaccine car cholera anthrax and rabies vaccine cholera anthrax and rabies vaccine right so this is about the louis pasteur that you should remember fermentation principle disapproved a biogenesis theory he gave the concept of he gave the concept of fermentation principle concept of autoclave and as well as pasteurization of milk so pasteurization of milk and one more thing if i say this man if i remember this also person gave the concept of liquid culture media so liquid media concept was given by louis pasteur so number l4 liquid l4 louis l4 liquid l4 louis so liquid louis but remember if i say the second man second man was a solid personality he was a solid personality why because he gave the this robert koch so was a solid personality because this robert is a solid man so remember robert robert what he did robert gave solid media concept so remember robert is solid robert gave solid media concepts so he also gave a coach postulates he gave coach postulates right so he discovered this tb bacteria so he was the discoverer of tb bacteria he also discovered cholera bacilli so the sanders and sir i want to show you few attention here the cholera bacilli cholera bacilli was discovered by robert cox and if i say the cholera vaccine cholera vaccine was discovered by louis pasteur so both are two different mcqs that you need to understand both are two different mcqs okay then understand this he gave the principle of hanging drop motility hanging drop motility and he is considered he is considered the father of modern microbiology robert cox is considered father of modern microbiology right so understand this if i say if i say the last thing i have to summarize this so you know from this your knowledge that is we have coach postulates that bacteria should be constantly associated with the lesion of disease and it should be possible that we should isolate that bacteria in culture inoculation of such pure culture into animals should reproduce a lesion of the same disease and it should be possible to re isolate bacterium in pure culture from the lesion produced in experimental animals so these are few coach postulates but these are two bacteria that never follow coach postulate these bacteria are mycobacterium leprae and treponema pallidum treponema pallidum mycobacterium leprae and treponema pallidum so these are information about a few important scientists that is louis pasteur and the second one is robert cox robert cox is it is clear so if i say if i say the few more scientists name if i say if i want to remember if i want to tell you few more scientists that is paul ehrlich paul ehrlich and the second one second one will be cat joseph lister joseph lister joseph lister carry be mulis Carry B. Mullis. Edward Jenner. So these are other scientists. Understand this. If I say about Paul Ehrlich, 
for a scientist associated he is considered he is considered the father of chemotherapy he is considered the father of chemotherapy so this time writing few things father of chemotherapy he is considered the father of chemotherapy and is uh, joseph lister if i talk about joseph lister he he gave the antiseptic method so what he provided is antiseptic method he gave the concept of antiseptic method Carrie B. Millis is considered father of PCR. Carrie B. Millis is considered father of PCR. Jenner, you know, Jenner is associated with vaccine. He is considered father of vaccination. Vaccination. So these are other scientists' names that you should remember in general part of this microbiology discussion. So let's see quickly. Let us see once again. Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur, the famous scientist, then followed by Robert Cox. So Robert Cox. He gave Cox postulates. He gave Cox postulates. There are certain bacteria that don't follow Cox postulate. These bacteria are Mycobacterium leprae, Mycobacterium leprae, and Treponema pallidum, and Treponema pallidum, and Treponema pallidum. Then understand this. Then understand what we have. We have the uh, concept concept of media. So in general microbiology, what I'll be discussing the concept of media. If I say if I say the concept of media, understand this. The first media, first media, you know, it was used by Louis Pasteur. So these are basic things. So I think you should be focusing more on your principal notes. So these are just revision session. So these will be just revision sessions which I am discussing right now. Otherwise, you need to focus on your own personal notes. That is a much important thing. So if I say that the first media which was used by Louis Pasteur that was uh, urine or meat broth, then we have uh, in media what we use we use agar. We use some substance called as agar. This agar agar is obtained from sea weeds. Agar is obtained from sea weeds. So if you have something some information missing in your notes, you can. Add the things which I am speaking because it's a revision session, so I will not be making a full video, it will be short video. The more I will speak, less I will write. So, if you miss something, you can also write the information which I am speaking. So, understand this agar is made from seaweed. So generally, what we use is 2% agar, 2% is agar we use in solid media. For solid media, what we use, we use 2% agar. If I talk about if I talk about semi solid media, we use 0.5 to 2% agar. So, understand this, this agar, agar is not having any nutritive property. It is just a solidifying agent. It is nothing. It is just a solidifying agent. So, so this is about the agar, but we have different type of agar. We have different type of agar. One is called as nutrient agar and second will be blood agar. So first type what we have is we call this nutrient agar and second will be blood agar. So understand this. If I say if I say nutrient agar, if I talk about this nutrient agar and blood agar, so this nutrient agar is considered a simple media. Simple media. When I talk about blood agar, if I talk about blood agar, this is considered enriched media. It is considered enriched media. So we have simple agar, we have simple agar, and we have simple media. The simple agar that is a nutrient agar, and what we have, we have blood agar, and we have chocolate agar. So blood agar and chocolate agar, these two are enriched media. These are enriched media. So understand this. These are enriched media. Then we can have alkaline peptone water. Alkaline peptone water. So these are some culture media. They can ask an image-based question on this. So just I have, I'm mentioning the images here for these different type of media. Then we have some some selective media. Selective media. The one of them is the Lonstein Johnson media that is called as LJ media. LJ media. Here you'll see rough, tough, buff colony. So this could be a possible image in this attempt in your exam. A rough, tough, buff colony. You will see there in Lonstein Johnson media. So understand this. If I say in this media, few facts about this media. This media will be having a substance called as malachite green. So what this will be doing, this malachite green will be doing, it will inhibit the growth of other bacteria and promote promote the growth of Mycobacterium TB. So malachite green, what it will be doing basically, it will be inhibiting the growth of other media and it will other other bacteria and it will promote promote the growth of Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Lastly, if I say for TB, for TB, now what we have, we have other culture media. So this LG media is a time taking media. It take around four weeks. Two to four weeks for a culture media to grow on this two to for a bacteria TB to grow on this LG media. So what we have now we have different media that is we can have middle brook media. Middle brook media, Bactec and MJIT. MJIT is mycobacterium growth indicator in tube. So these these are these are and fourth one I'm writing here LG media. So these are four culture media that you should remember for TB. 
these are four culture media that you should remember for TB. Okay, the next media which I'm having is uh, thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose. This media we use for Vibrio. This, we call this in short, we call this TCBS. This TCBS we use for Vibrio. TCBS we use for Vibrio. If I say a few more media names, so just few more selective media name I'm writing here, that is we have Wilson and Blair media. Wilson and Blair media, this Wilson and Blair media we use for Salmonella. Wilson and Blair media we use for Salmonella. Then we have a DCA media. This DCA media is used for Shigella. DCA media is used for Shigella. Right. Okay, coming to the next next revision point that is I'm having is you know the Macconkey agar. Macconkey agar. So understand this Macconkey agar. So Macconkey agar, sometimes they ask a question in Macconkey agar. What you'll see, you will see, you will see the lactose fermenting bacteria, LF is lactose fermenting. So these are Cetrobacter, Enterobacter, E. coli, and Klebsiella. Remember this seek. If I say non-lactose performing, what we have, we have we have Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, and Proteus. SSYP. So these are non-lactose performing. Some are late lactose fermenters, that is Shigella Sony and EIEC and invasive E. coli. So if I say sometimes they ask a question related to McConkey agar and McConkey agar, what we use? We use peptone. In McConkey agar, we use peptone, we use lactose. Lactose is a sugar. We use agar. We use agar. We use neutral red dye neutral red dye and we use torochlorate torochlorate so this is the plant the mnemonic is plant so these are the substance that you'll see these are the substance that you'll see there in my concagar so sometimes the question they ask an exam is what are the constituent what are the constituent of mcconkey So constituent of McConkey, remember by plant P L A N T L A N T. This McConkey agar is generally used for enterobacteriaceae, enterobacteriaceae family that is E. coli and Klebsiella. That is E. coli and Klebsiella. Okay, the next media which I am having is Clade media C L E D. That is C L E D. Clade stands for cysteine lactose electrolyte deficient. So if I say this Clade media C is cysteine, this is cysteine L is lactose. E is electrolyte, D is deficient. We call this clad media, C L E D clad media. Right. So understand this. This clad media is basically used. This, this prevent the swarming motility of proteas. This will prevent the swarming motility of prevent of proteas. So this will prevent based on this media. Remember, you will see the lactose fermenters will have a yellow colony. Lactose fermenters will have a yellow colony, and this clad media will prevent. Swarming motility of proteus. It will prevent swarming motility of proteus. Swarming motility of proteus. This is about clad media. Okay, then we have a test. This test is called as Kirby Boyer disc diffusion test. Right, so you can get an image based question. You will see the antibiotic susceptibility zone will come in this method. The media that we use is Muller Hilton Agar. In this uh, in this test, we use Muller Hilton Agar. We call this uh, Kirby Boyer disc diffusion test for antibody susceptibility. We use this test. So understand this, they can give you an image-based question and they can ask you an image based on this topic. So this will be the image-based question that they can ask on this topic. That is antibiotic. Antibiotic you can test by which method? You can test antibiotic by Kirby Boyer disc diffusion test. Kirby Boyer uh, disc diffusion test. So understand this. So these are the culture media. If I say, if I say, suppose in exam, they will not give for antibody susceptibility. If this alternative, the alternative, the alternative to this test, alternative to this test is Oxford penciling cup method. Oxford. Penicillin cup method. Alternative will be Oxford penicillin cup method. Alternative to this Kirli Boyer distribution test. Kirli Boyer distribution test. 
Okay, so then what we have, we have some questions that they ask related again and again for this topic that is about the autoclave. The first thing they ask about is the temperature that we use. That is, it is 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes and 15 psi. This is for autoclave. Simultaneously, just do not confuse this for uh, hot air oven. We use 160 degree for one to two hours. So it can be one to two hours, right? So generally it is one to two hours. So better I'll, I'll write the word one to two hours. So understand this, if I say, if I say, if I talk about this hot air oven, this hot air oven was also given by Louis Pasteur. Hot air oven was also given by Louis Pasteur. So it is based on the phenomena of dry heat. So basically we'll see here, it is based on the phenomena of dry heat. So I can say, I can say here something like hot air, oh, hot air oven, we use hot air oven for certain things. So we use hot air oven for scissors. We use hot air oven for scalpels. Syringes swab, syringes swab, right? Forceps and glassware to sterilize these things. We use hot air oven. We use hot air oven to sterilize scissors, scalpels, syringes, swab, forceps, glassware, and swab. If I say, if I say, compare this to uh, autoclave. Compare this to this autoclave. In this autoclave, the control that we use is uh, Bacillus sterilo thermophilus. So you can culture all media except LJ and lossless serum slope and lossless serum slope. So understand this. So all culture media you can culture by this except those media which are which contain sugar. So I can say except sugar containing media. Except the sugar containing media. Right. Now understand this. So this sugar containing media for this sugar containing media, what do we use for the sugar containing media? We use a process that process is called as tendalization. For this, we use a process that is called as tendalization or incipitation. Or incipitation. Now understand this. If I say if I compare this, the question the difficult thing that they ask in exam is for hot air oven. You will use in control basis sterile thermophilus. If I say, if I talk about this, for, for, sorry, for autoclave, we use yes, basically sterile thermophilus. If I say for hot air oven, we use clostridium tetany. Clostridium tetany or bacillus subtilis. Or bacillus subtilis. This we use for hot air oven. This we use for hot air oven. Okay, so next understand this what we have, we have a gram stain. So, you know, the purple will be gram positive, the pink will be gram negative, pink will be gram negative. So, sometimes they ask a question like is like which bacteria are gram positive. So, understand this gram positive bacteria or gram positive bacilli include mycobacterium. Mycobacterium. Anthrax. Anthrax. Clostridium. Clostridium. Then we have diphtheria. <coughs> diphtheria that is clostridium diphtheria. Nocardia. Nocardia. Actinomycetes. Actinomycetes. Listeria. And diphtheroids. And diphtheroids. So understand this. This how you can remember this. You can remember by a simple mnemonic that is McDonald's. This you can remember by a simple mnemonic that mnemonic will be McDonald's. So if I can say the mnemonic will be McDonald's. So these are gram positive bacilli. These are gram positive bacilli that you should remember. Other bacilli are gram negative. Other bacilli are gram negative. Okay, so if I talk about the viruses, so you know that is nowadays what we are having, we are having the pandemic of COVID viruses. COVID virus, a dangerous virus. So we have started a separate series of COVID so that you can watch on the YouTube. So I have talked about remedies here. I have given a video of home management of COVID and a video of extra pulmonary COVID, like extra pulmonary COVID. So now let's talk about the viruses. If I say, if I say, 
So first, let me tell you about the shape of some virus. You can see the rabies virus is bullet shape. If I see the box virus, box virus is brick shape. I do know virus is space, space vehicle or spaceship shape. Ebola and marble, these are filamentous. These both are filamentous. If I say the tobacco mosaic virus, if I talk about tobacco mosaic virus, the tobacco mosaic virus is rod shape, influenza is spherical, influenza is spherical. So then, then what these are the shape that they can ask in exam. So you can see the rabies virus. Then you can see the box virus. Brick shape, it looks like a brick. If you can notice the adenovirus, it looking like a spaceship. It's adenovirus. If I the next one, next one is a filamentous virus, is Ebola. Filamentous virus that is Ebola. Okay, then you can see this is your uh, tobacco mosaic virus. Tobacco mosaic virus. So now, what understand is this question? This image based question already came in exam that is influenza virus. Influenza virus. So, so these are the different shapes of virus which we have written here. After the shape of virus, what is it? You can ask you the expected question that is expected behind this question will be coronavirus. You can see these are crown like projection. This coronavirus, this will be having a crown like projection. So these are the crown, these are the crown like projection. We call them petal like papillomeres. Petals like papillomeres on surface. We call this a petal like papillomeres on surface. Then understand this. If you see the spoke wheel appearance, we call this rotavirus. This is the spoke wheel appearance. You can see in case of rotavirus. You know, rotavirus is most common to the diary and children. So this is about the rotavirus. Right. Okay, then understand this. Some sometimes sometimes they ask a question related to related to the inclusion bodies. So these are all high inclusion bodies. All high inclusion bodies you will see where in CMV cytomegalovirus, and you can see this here. In pathology you see this here in Hodgkin lymphoma we call this Reed-Sternberg cells. In Hodgkin lymphoma we call this Reed-Sternberg cells. Reed-Sternberg cells. So all high inclusion bodies these are pathognomonic for CMV, but you may also see them in other viruses. You may also see them in other viruses. Zang smear. If I talk about Zang smear, these are uh, multinucleated giant cells, right? With facetted nuclei, you will see this in her herpes simplex virus. In herpes simplex virus, you will see Zang smear. Negri bodies. Uh, classical question that they ask again and again. Negri bodies you will see in uh, rabies, rabies encephalitis. Warten fingerlet giant cells. Warten fingerlet giant cells. These are the giant cells or Warten fingerlet giant bodies. You will see in a condition called as measles. Okay, so sometimes they ask a question like is this Warten Fingerlay? Warten Fingerlay is both, both intranuclear as well as intracytoplasmic inclusion body. So here sometimes they ask a question which is intranuclear, which which is intranuclear and which is intracytoplasmic inclusion body and which is both. So understand this. This is the revision, so I am using some short text here because I want to summarize the whole topic in a less time span. So if I say the both, both type of bodies you will see, the answer is clear in front of you, that is both you will see there in measles. Both intranuclear as well as intracytoplasmic you will see in measles and CMV cytomegalovirus. If I talk about intracytoplasmic, you will see in rabies. You will see in vaccinia. You will see in foul box. You will see in molluscum contagiosum. Molluscum contagiosum. And if I say this, you will also see in, in variola. In variola. You will see this in variola. In variola. So if I say in rabies, vaccinia, foul box, molluscum contagiosum, and variola, and variola. So you will see what you will see intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. If I talk about intranuclear, intranuclear, you will see in herpes, you will see in yellow fever, you will see in herpes and yellow fever in adeno. Adenoviruses and in poliovirus. 
so these are the inclusion bodies that they ask mcq again and again so you know already in agents you will see what in pinkerley and cells in cmv you will see all five inclusion bodies so let me talk about the body's name here that they ask as a question in exam in rabies in rabies we call this negri bodies these are negri bodies in case of vaccinia we call this garner bodies In case of foul pox, we call this Bollinger body. Bollinger body. In case of molluscum contagiosum, in case of molluscum contagiosum, we call this molluscum bodies. Molluscum body or Henderson Peterson body, HP bodies. In variola, we call this Paschen bodies. Passion body. So these are some of the bodies. If I talk about intranuclear, intranuclear, you know, herpes and yellow fever, we call this cowdery A. We call this cowdery type A. And in adeno and polio, we call this cowdery B. Cowdery B. So these are the inclusion bodies that you should remember for exam purpose. These are some of the bodies that you see that you should remember for exam purpose intranuclear intracytoplasmic or both types or both types of bodies or both types of bodies or both types of bodies okay so then you can see this is based up by retinopathy that is caused by a cytomegalovirus. virus you will see cottage cheese appearance or, or ketchup appearance cottage cheese and ketchup appearance the drug of choice the drug that we use in cmv retinitis is again cyclovir and this type of retinitis is generally seen in hiv patient or immunocompromised patient Immunocompromised patient. Immunocompromised patient. Okay, so then, then if I say, sometimes they ask question in virology related to the vaccine that we use. So this is basically a topic of PSM and microbiology integrated topics. So if I say, if I say we have live vaccine, we have live vaccine. Live vaccine, we can say live vaccine. Like we can call this. The remember this by MMR. OPTBY. MMR is measles, mumps, rubella. MMR is measles, mumps, rubella. OP is oral polio. Oral polio. Oral polio is SARC or seven. It is seven. TB and yellow fever. TB and yellow fever. These are live vaccine. If I talk about killed vaccine, if I talk about killed vaccine, killed vaccine. So what we have, we can call this SARC vaccine. SARC vaccine. That is also for polio. If I talk about this, it can be influenza vaccine, hepatitis B vaccine, and and rabi pure vaccine of rabies, vaccine for rabies. So these are what these are killed vaccine. So live vaccine, killed vaccine, live vaccine and killed vaccine. So understand this. This is about the live vaccine and killed vaccine. Then let me talk about some of the fungus. Some of the fungus, the question that they ask an exam related to some fungus. So you can see the first is copper penny bodies. We call this a copper penny bodies. So copper penny bodies, we also call them medullary bodies or sclerotic cells. So these are seen in chromoblastomycosis. These are seen there in chromoblastomycosis. Copper penny body or medullary bodies. So let me talk about few fungus. So I'm telling you about copper bodies. In copper penny bodies that you'll see there. You will see copper penny bodies. In case of chromoblastomycosis. Okay, then pilot wheel appearance. Pilot wheel appearance you will see where in paracoxidomycosis. Pilot wheel appearance you will see where in paracoxidomycosis. Okay, so understand this. Then the question they ask in the exam related to this rose gardener disease. Rose gardener disease is caused by sporotrichosis. Sporotrichosis. We call this a rose, a road rose gardener disease. So sometimes they ask a question, the basic question that they ask in exam related to the mycology part. So let me let me tell you a few basic things that they ask in exam. They ask questions related to dimorphic fungi. So what are dimorphic fungi? So if I talk about dimorphic fungi, so understand this. You can remember this by mnemonic his pen. His pen can blast. This pen can blast spores of coxidomycosis and paracoxidomycosis. 
coxidomycosis this is in front of you and paracoxidomycosis So understand this, if I say his, his stand for, his stand for histoplasmosis. Histoplasmosis, paracoxidomycosis, P stand for penicillin, this pen is penicillin. So let me write this penicillin, penicillin notatum or penicillin, penicillinium notatum, histoplasmosis. And can see in the first alphabet, you can see this can. Candida, it is candida, candida. Blastomycosis. Sporotrix, sporotrichosis or sporotrichosis. These two I'm not adding because it's same coxidomycosis and paracoxidomycosis. So these are what, these are what the question they ask in exam is, these are dimorphic fungi these are dimorphic fungi means they will have both form they will have both yeast form as well as mold form so they will be yeast at 37 degree and they will be mold at 25 degree so they will have both the forms if i say if i say the first what i'm having is we call this uh, chromoblastomycosis so you will see in chromoblastomycosis you will see copper penny bodies major bodies and sclerotic cells and sclerotic cells right so sometimes they can also ask you a question that is in in Chromoblastomycosis, the appearance, the appearance we call this, we call this a muriform appearance. Muriform cell appearance. Muriform cell appearance. The example, you know, it is a, uh, it is a phylophora and cladosporium. These are example of chromoblastomycosis. Okay, if I talk about sporotrichosis, right? So this this is a generally causing a subcutaneous infection. Subcutaneous infection, right? So we also call this a rose gardener disease. A rose garden disease so it is commonly seen in those people those who walk barefoot right so you will see the appearance here the appearance you will see here we call this a flower like appearance so it will have it will have like a flower like sporulation or flower like spore in mold form and it will show a phenomena that's the phenomena i'm writing here splendor pulse phenomena So this sporotrichosis will show a splendor hopels phenomena. Okay, so next what we have, next what we have, we have uh, two different types of mycetoma. One is called as your uh, U mycetoma and second will be actinomycetoma. A U mycetoma and an actinomycetoma. So let me talk about this uh, actinomycetoma. You can see multiple sinus and swelling in actinomycetoma, whereas U mycetoma, you will have single sinus swelling, right? Single sinus swelling. So this is actinomycetoma. You will see multiple sinus swelling. It will be purulent and osteolytic. It will be purulent and osteolytic, and this will have this will have a sunray appearance. It will have a sunray appearance. Sunray appearance. If I talk about you mycetoma, you will see a single sinus. There is here in actinomastoma you will see multiple sinus. You will see multiple sinus. Right. Okay, so next what we have we call this spaghetti and meatball appearance. Spaghetti and meatball appearance. And you will see this scales in 10% KOH mount. You can see fried egg appearance in saburos dextrosagar. And you can see golden yellow fluorescence. These all are MCQs related to tinea versicolor. These all are MCQ that they ask from tinea versicolor. So it's a generally a tinea versicolor caused by malassezia for food. Malassezia for food. So you will see in 10% KOH, you will have spaghetti and meatball appearance. This question asked many times in exam. And you will see in SD, you will see fried egg appearance. And golden yellow inflorescence, you will see golden yellow fluorescence, you will see where in case of wood lamp examination. In case of wood lamp examination. Okay, so then we have a uh, pedra. We call this a uh, black pedra. Black pedra that is caused, caused by pedri hardy. Pedri hardy. Or we have a white pedra that is caused by trichosporon bigeli. White pedra and black pedra. So understand this generally. These are these are uh, nodules that affect your hairs. These are nodules that, that, is, that they form nodules in the hairs. So basically, this is black pedra 
and white beetle. Both these are called as Atenia nigri. Both these are variant of Atenia nigra. Atenia nigra. So then they can ask an image based question on fish in stream appearance, a positive string test, rice water diarrhea, and comma shaped monotrichous bacilli that is Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae. Okay, if I talk about the next bacteria in my list, will be Streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae. So this is a bacteria which is a Diplococci bacteria. If you see the gram strain, it will look a Diplococci and gram strain. If you compare this, compare this with Staphylococcus, it will have a grape-like cluster. Grape-like cluster. So understand this, you will see chain-like formation in Streptococcus. How you will differentiate between these two to understand this? Staph, staph is catalyst positive. Staph is catalyst positive and streptococcus is catalyst negative. So catalyst test is done. Catalyst test is done to differentiate staphylococcus and streptococcus. So how we differentiate streptococcus and staphylococcus by a test called as catalyst test. So you can see that next test is a uh, coagulase test. So coagulase test means coagulase test is done to differentiate different species of Staphylococcus. So there are coagulase positive Staphylococcus and there are there are coagulase negative Staphylococcus. Right, so we can have cones means coagulase negative. So understand this, we consider we consider coagulase positive Staphylococcus as pathogenic and coagulase negative as non-pathogenic. 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 Right? So understand this. If I say, if I say this coagulase. We can have a two form of coagulase, so they sometimes they can also cause uh, non pathogen does not mean they will not cause any disease. Sometimes they can also cause a disease. So if I see the example of cones, so if I see the example of cones, you will see the first cones is Staphylococcus epidermidis, and second will be Staphylococcus aprophyticus. Staphylococcus aprophyticus. Right. So understand that if I see, if you remember, epidermidis will cause endocarditis and uh, saprophyticus it causes a UTI or urinary tract infection of cystitis in young female. In young female. Okay, so you can see the golden yellow colonies, staph aureus, golden yellow colonies in staph aureus. So let me tell you, this is a golden yellow colony in staph aureus. So you can see a white, a white colonies in case of coagulase negative staphylococcus. You will see white colonies. Okay, then these are the disease that is caused by staphylococcus. So let me elaborate them one by one. They can give you an image based question, a picture based question that they can ask an exam. Staphylococcus can call staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. So you will see there will be there will be scalding of the skin. So patient will develop. This is due to this is generally this. We call this S S S S. It is it is generally due to epidermolytic toxins. It is due to epidermolytic toxin. It is due to epidermolytic toxin. You will see staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome. Right. So if it is not treated well, it can ultimately further convert into toxic epidermal necrolysis. Then understand this, you will see, you will see, you will see there will be a toxic shock syndrome. You can see a toxic shock syndrome, especially this toxic shock syndrome is seen in females. In females, this toxic shock syndrome with the females, those, those who are using vaginal tampons during their menstruation cycle. So understand this, it is due to enterotoxin F. It is due to enterotoxin F. So I told you before. Scarlet syndrome is due to epidermolytic toxin and this is due to enterotoxin F. So remember F, F for female. F for female. Is it clear? Streptococcus can also cause toxic shock syndrome. So remember toxic shock syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome is caused by both staph aureus, both staphylococcus as well as streptococcus. So remember both can cause toxic shock syndrome. Both can cause toxic shock syndrome. Okay, so then understand this. We have uh, some more uh, question related to this. That this question, this image came in exam. That is, you will see, you will see this question. That is, uh, impetigo, impetigo, 
in particular this question image based question came in exam it is a palace you will see it is a palace will have a powdery orange appearance in the face you will see eruption or rash uh, orange color or reddish orange rash in the skin in the face we call this it is a palace or honeycomb pattern and sometimes necrotizing fasciitis necrotizing fasciitis so these are caused by streptococcal infection so these are caused by streptococcal infection so these are caused by streptococcal infection and then i want one more thing you know that it is also a positive agent for rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so remember these are the images that they ask in microbiology related to streptococcus that you should understand okay moving ahead we have a test called as camp test at the full form is christian atkin munch peterson camp test so understand this this camp test is differentiating staphylococcus and streptococcus pyogenes so basically you will see this streptococcus pyogenes will be negative and streptococcus agilecti will be positive so we differentiate we differentiate streptococcus pyogenes and streptococcus agilecti by this test called as camp test by this test called as camp test Okay, if I talk about enterobacterium, enterobacterium or enterobacteria, and enterobacteria family. So here you will see, you will see this is an image that they ask in exam. That is, you will see enterococci bacteria. Then understand this, we have a Chinese letter appearance or cuneiform appearance that is seen there in Corynebacterium diphtheria. We also call this a clap lowflare specimen. And this will form a pseudo membrane. This will form a pseudo membrane. So these are a top MCQ related to your Corynebacterium bacterium diphtheria. This is your bile esculine test to differentiate Streptococcus pyogenes, to differentiate Streptococcus pyogenes and Enterococcal fischialis. You can differentiate this. Okay, so understand this. Erythrasma. Erythrasma is caused by Corynebacterium minutissimum, and this will have this will have a coral red, coral red inflorescence in a wood lamp examination. Coral red inflorescence and wood lamp examination. In wood lamp examination, then you can see uh, bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis. So understand this. Bacillus anthracis. Uh, many questions that they ask in exam. The first you will see here. You will see Ascoli's phenomena. You will see Ascoli phenomena, right? You will see Medusa head. You will see Medusa head colony or mottled hair appearance, or mottled wool-like appearance. And we use here plate media. This is about Bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis. Clostridium tetani. Clostridium tetani will have a drumstick appearance. You will see a terminal and round spores. This Clostridium tetani can lead to uh, Clostridium botulism can lead to a flaccid paralysis due to honey. Due to honey, you will see the Clostridium botulinum infection. We call this a floppy baby syndrome. Floppy baby syndrome. This will be caused by Clostridium botulinum. Okay, then if I say like we can have a gene expert method, that is a gene expert method that we use to detect a TB. We also call the gene expert method, that is this can detect, we call this gene expert method. It can detect the TB bacilli in less than two hours. So it will also uh, predict your rifampicin resistance. Rifampicin resistance is generally due to RPOV gene mutation. RPOV gene mutation. Right? So, so understand this, this is one test that is called as gene expert. Why we still do this? Because it's a early test. We can do this in less than two hours. The second method which we have is called as LPA. LPA is line probe assay. Line probe assay. Line probe assay. And this can detect, this can detect both reformation. And isoniazide resistant. The formula reason I told you it is because of RPOB gene. For this, remember CAT G gene and INH gene. Isoniazide resistance due to CAT G gene 
and INH gene. INH gene. So what we can do? We can do a gene expert. Right. We also call the CB not. We also call the CB not cartridge based nucleic cartridge based new cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. Cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. Okay, then we have Montox test. To understand this Montox test. What we do is we this test is we don't use this. It's a type four hypersensitivity reaction. We inject 0.1 ml of tuberculin unit, right? And then we see the size of induration. Then we see the size of induration. So just you inject this and see the report after see the report after 24 hours. Then you will tell the patient to not to apply, not to apply any kind of not to apply any kind of uh, oil or, or moisturizers or cosmetic into this and then you can see the size of induration the size of induration will be more in immunocompromised and size of induration sometimes may be absent sometimes in those patients those who have a needle stick injury you can see the size of induration will be increased so remember always when we do this test the size of induration will keep on increasing we call this boosting phenomena boosting phenomena means the every time you do this test whether the person is positive or negative size of induration will increase we call this Montox test. Montox test. Then you can see the sun ray appearance. In mycobacterium lepre, you can see the globi in the lepre. Then this is how we do how we do a test called as Vidal test. How we do the test called as Vidal test for salmonella typhi or entry fever. For salmonella typhi or entry fever. So we can do Vidal test, but remember Vidal test is false positive in many other condition. So nowadays what we perform, we perform a Typhi dot test. Typhi dot test, we find the antibody immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin M titer. Then you can see the Cetrimide agar. The Cetrimide agar is used for pseudomonas. Cetrimide agar we use for pseudomonas. Sutramadagar, we use for pseudomonas. If I talk about Ducre infection, Haemophilus Ducre infection, so it can lead to chancroid, which will have school of fish appearance and tram track appearance. School of fish appearance, it will lead to a painful uh, genital ulcer. We call this a painful ulcer by Haemophilus Ducre. Okay, then you can see the phenomena of satellitism. Phenomena of satellitism in Haemophilus influenza. We can use Leventhal, Leventhal's media. Dark ground microscopy. Dark ground microscopy. This is used to detect spirochid infection. Spirochid means that is treponema, Borrelia and Leptospira. For this what we do? We do light. Uh, we do dark ground microscopy. Clue cells. Clue cells. AMS, AMS criteria. A WIF test. These all are questions related to bacterial vaginosis, which is caused by the main causative agent will be Gardenilla vaginalis. It causes bacterial vaginosis, bacterial vaginosis. Mulberry-like nozzle, needle mass, right? Causative agent is the Rhinosporidium seabury. It is seen in Rhinosporidiosis. Rhinosporidiosis. Then they can ask you the image of Ballantidium coli. Ballantidium coli. Okay, then what we have, we have infection, we have infection that is cryptococcus infection, cryptococcus infection. Generally it is seen, generally seen where in AIDS patient. This infection generally seen where in AIDS patient. And in this infection you will do, you will stain this by India ink preparation. You will stain this by an India ink preparation. If I talk about a falling leaf-like motility, to falling leaf-like motility, you will see four pairs of flagella in GRDA. And it can lead to malabsorption syndrome. This GRDA is considered, it's also called as great grand old man. Great grand old man of intestine. It can lead to malabsorption syndrome. So if I say about this GRDA lamblia, what you should remember, this GRDA lamblia, understand this. GRDA lamblia can lead to malabsorption syndrome. So uh, in MCQ, sometimes they ask the drug of choice. So previously we were using metronidazole. In India and many places still we use, but remember, tenazole is a slight better, a more effective drug than metronidazole. Still in some of the books, you will see the word metronidazole, but tenazole we have to do just one dose. 
Tenatorco, we have to we have to give only one dose. Well, metadone we have to give for five days. Three to five days we have to give metadone. So tenazol is a preferred drug. What's your idea, sis? Chagas disease. Chagas disease are caused by uh trypanosoma. So understand this crozy, this trypanosoma crozy. We call this American trypanosomiasis. The vector will be rid of it bug. Uh, one more thing, uh, if I can say about a Chagas disease, remember uh, a surgery type question that it is also a cause of Achalasia cardia. It can also cause Achalasia cardia. It can also cause Achalasia cardia. Then you can get an image of Cryptosporidium parma, Cyclospora and Isospora. So remember, Cryptosporidium can lead to diarrhea in its patient. It can lead to diarrhea in its patient. So these are, these are the coccidian parasites that you should remember. Then in helminthology, in microbiology, what they are generally asking, they are generally asking the image-based question. Generally what they are asking, they are asking image-based question from these elements, like they can ask the question on this image. So first let us look at this image. First let me tell you about these images. So what are the images that they ask in exam? So see, nematodes, ascarius, facial hepatica, Tenia. Then you can see the scolex, strobila, and prosmodotus. So how you will differentiate? You will differentiate these by the type of suckers that they present in case of tenia shaginata and tenia solium. Operculated egg. Operculated egg you will see in diphilobotrium latum. Operculated egg you will see where in diphilobotrium latum. Hemolipsis nana, hemolipsis nana. This image also I think came in exam. Then we have Babesia microti. We have we call this a Maltese cross appearance. This appearance we call this Maltese cross appearance. Maltese cross appearance. You will see in Babesia infection. Then we have cystosoma. Cystosoma you can see we have cystosoma mansoni with a lateral spine, hematobium with a terminal spine and japonicum with a knob japonicum with a knob japonicum with a knob okay then we have a facial hepatica that is called as liver flu it can lead to Holzin syndrome or laryngeal edema or laryngeal edema chinese liver flu can lead to it is called as chlorinke sinensis or opisthotorcus sinensis you will see this this can lead to cholangiocarcinoma, a cancer of bile duct. Cholangiocarcinoma or a cancer of bile duct. Lung fluke. Lung fluke, we call this parognemus westermanni. Patient will, patient will develop a red-brown sputum. A red-brown sputum. Then we can have ascariasis. A differentiation of ascariasis in case of male and a female. If I say then what we have, we have the images of uh, Voncaria, Voncrofti. Which can lead to filariasis. You will see the tail tip will be free of nucleus. If it is a two nuclei in the tail tip, we call this Brugia malai. We call this Brugia malai. Brugia malai. So these are some of the important images which I have discussed in a session of microbiology. So, like this, uh, we discuss other things or other topics. Let me move on to the further images. We can have Oncoceria bulbulus. Oncoceria bulbulus. Which can lead to Oncosarcoma or river blindness. Which can lead to Oncosarcoma or river blindness in the eye. Loa loa. Loa loa can lead to loiasis. In the skin, it will lead to a calabar swelling. Tricurious, tricurious, tricuria, tricurious, tricuria. You can see the polar plugs. Then we have Anglostoma redenale, Stercoralis. So, understand this? We call this hookworm. It can penetrate in the skin and it can lead to iron deficiency anemia. Okay, then we have a list of culture media. Then we have a list of these culture media that you can discuss, you can study, you can study this, some specialized media, 
and these are some of the named fevers that they ask in exam like shanghai fever malta fever right uh, right bite fever wills disease and what growth factor we need for different organism what are the virulence virulence factor of different organism for example if i suppose to have four years we have coagulin streptococcus we have m protein pneumococcus we have capsule polysaccharide for gonococcus we have blood tuberculosis we have cord factor tostridium perforans we call this lecithinase then we do these tests these tests to understand this dick test schwarzman carton test scarlet fever chick test for diphtheria mix fed in reaction as colis phenomena for bacillus diazo reaction for salmonella dyens phenomena proteus string test we do for vibrio negler reaction for clostridium perforans kuhlang reaction pneumococcus freeze test lgv alkes precipitant test for etc and test test for listeria then sometimes some organism will will show different type of uh, culture appearance on the colonies you will see different type of appearance you can see a golden yellow colonies in case of coagulus positive staph aureus you will see a white colonies in coagulus negative staph aureus glossy colonies in your streptococci you will see jet black colonies in salmonella which i showed you already satellitism influenza school of flesh hemophilus typhi then we can see friday colony is mycoplasma and drotman colony drotman or caram 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 coin like colony pneumococcus okay so then sometimes they ask a question related to the the bacteria with their names of scientists so they can ask you a question on clab lofless bacilli diphtheria please no card bacilli colony bacteria pseudo tuberculosis then then the important one is betis bacilli that is mycobacterium anticellulare pfeffer's bacilli hemophilus influenzae friend friedlander's bacillus klebsiella pneumonia frisch bacillus klebsiella rhinus clematis so these are some named named bacteria that you should remember and if i if i write the word simple cox bacilli this is your tb mycobacterium tuberculosis is called as cox bacilli <coughs> then you can read this in in these infections which are transmitted between animal and human then we know that different type of motility that is a darting motility you will see in campylobacter and vibrio tumbling in listeria gliding in mycoplasma stellating in clostridium lashing borrelia twitching trichomonas oxcrew in trypanosoma pallidum spinning motility in fusobacteria so these are the mycobacteria which you can stain by gm cell stain what we have what else we have we have periodic acid shift stain periodic acid shift stain that stain we use generally for fungus basically past stain remember this stain is used to diagnose whipple disease and fungal infection and for fungal infections for fungus also we use this stain pikes media we use for streptococcus pyogenes stewart media for gonococcus carry blyer for vibrio cholerae Sachs buffer glycerol saline for shigella. Sachs buffer glycerol saline for shigella. So this is about the uh, image-based revision session that we have covered in microbiology part. So, so similarly, we'll discuss the other topics. Similarly, we'll discuss the other topics related to this uh, part of our discussions. We'll discuss the all nineteen subject revision module in this YouTube channel. So you can share these videos with your friends so they can also have a benefit for their upcoming FMG exam. So this is from my side. i'll conclude the session in case of any doubt you can ask me in the comment box in case of any other messages you have or if you want a video on a difficult topic which you which is that you think difficult is difficult for you or which is not clear in the class you can ask me i'll be making a video on that particular topic that will be related to any subjects so this is from my side so i know it's a hard time for everyone so that is why we made this session uh complimentary in the youtube channel so that everyone belonging to any institute in india can watch it and get some benefit for their fmg exam so again i'm repeating this is not your main source the main source for your knowledge for exam will be your own handwritten notes which is given to you in your classroom this is for your revision session to just to make some early revision points to make some revision in lesser time so that is for your revision so just see this video now and see this video once attend as before your exam that is a uh, an opinion from my side good luck stay work work hard try to study the topic and then give the test after this hearing this video you can give the test and 
you can assess yourself where you stand so understand this a hard time we are going on so we will be moving to the next part so day after, day after tomorrow that will be a discussion on forensic medicine thank you so much thank you for listening thank you for your time good luck bye bye